Right, hi guys, welcome to Biochemistry and Cell Biology. And in this presentation, I'll be covering the Krebs slash TCA slash citric acid cycle. So the learning objectives are to know the reaction which converts pyruvate into acetyl-CoA and understand why it's a key control point in glucose metabolism, to be able to outline the citric acid cycle, and to know that the citric acid cycle also supplies biosynthetic precursors to other pathways. So let's just have a recap of what we're all doing. This is all about the glucose metabolism. Okay. So in the last video, we, we covered glycolysis, which occurs here in the cytosol. So our next step is the citric acid cycle, which occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria. First of all, what is the citric acid cycle? Well, this is the citric acid cycle is also known as the TCA cycle, which stands for tricarboxylic acid cycle, or you can call it the Krebs cycle, named after the founder of it. And its main purpose is to produce reduced electron carriers ready for the next step in glucose metabolism, which is called oxidative phosphorylation, or the electron transport chain. But before we even start talking about the citric acid cycle, we need to go back a step first. So in order to activate the cycle, the pyruvate must first be converted into acetyl-CoA, which occurs by a step known as the link reaction. And this goes as followed. So we have pyruvate and CoA and NAD. We then put all these together and our outcome is acetyl-CoA, carbon dioxide and our reduced electron carrier. And that is catalyzed by the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase. Throughout this whole presentation, any writing you see in red bold is the enzyme which catalyzes that reaction. Okay, And also, any time that carbon dioxide is released from a molecule, it is known as oxidative decarboxylation. All right. So, this here is an overview of the Krebs slash TCA slash citric acid cycle. And as you can see, at a first glance, it does look pretty intimidating, does it? It probably makes you want to fall on the floor and start crying. But actually, it's not as complicated as what you think it is. I know you don't get a hit Gaia, but we're going to carry on anyway, and this is going to go in eight separate steps. So step one of eight is initiation. So this is where the acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate bond together to form citric acid and CoA, and that is catalyzed by the enzyme citrate synthase. So as we can see, acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate come together and we form this citric acid, which is also the tricarboxylic acid. So we've got one carboxylic acid group here, another carboxylic acid group here, and another one here, hence the name the TCA, or tricarboxylic acid cycle. Then we're in step two is isomerization. So citric acid must first be isomerized into isocitrate, and that is catalyzed by the enzyme acarnitase. So if, you if we just compare these two molecules which we've got here, see where the OH group is on citric acid, all we're doing is literally just shifting it along one, so it's now on this carbon here. That's the whole purpose of that next step. Now we come to step three of eight, which is reduction. So isocitrate and NAD come together to form alpha ketoglutarate and a reduced electron carrier and carbon dioxide. And that is catalyzed by the enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase. So just looking at these two, we can't really see what has actually happened. So what we're going to do, we're just going to rotate this one here. So now can you see what's happened? What we've done, this carbon here has been cleaved off, giving us carbon dioxide, and obviously the electron carrier then comes through and whips up the remaining hydrogens. Then we come to step four of eight, which is addition and subtraction. So here the alpha ketoglutarate bonds with CoA and NAD to form succinyl CoA, a reduced electron carrier, and another carbon dioxide. And that's catalyzed by alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. So here we've got the alpha ketoglutarate. And literally all we're doing, we're cleaving off this carboxyl, carboxyl group here by replacing it with our CoA group. Then step five, you can literally think, oops, wasn't meant to be there. So the succinyl CoA go, combines with GDP and inorganic phosphate. And this allows us to cleave off that CoA. So it's literally like we put it there and we're like, oops, wasn't meant to be there, so let's just take it off. And in the process, we synthesize GTP and also we'll end up with succinate. And that is catalyzed by succinyl CoA synthetase. Now we're on step six of eight, which is FAD. Okay, so the reason I remember it as this is because we've got succinate, or succinate, however you pronounce it, goes with FAD, which is one of our electron carriers. 
to form fumarate and reduced FAD, hence the f bit. And that's catalyzed by succinate dehydrogenase. And literally all we're doing is just cleaving off these two hydrogens and adding them, adding them onto our electron carrier. Okay, then for step 7 of 8, which is hydrolysis. So here, fumarate is hydrolyzed with water to form malate, and that's catalyzed by the enzyme of fumarase. So here, we're just literally sticking on the water to break that double carbon bond right there. Then you're probably wondering, Sensei, aren't they exactly the same, succinate and malate? Well, they're very similar, but there's only one tiny little difference. So we look over here, we just pay attention to these two hydrogens here. Then they're given off to the carrier, and if you look at what's happened with the water, the two hydrogens there have now become an OH group on the second carbon here, and that's the only difference between malate and succinate. And as we know in biology, it's a lot more complicated than just sticking an oxygen there. You have to go through all these separate steps in order to do it. And then finally, step eight of eight, oxalo at again. So here, malate and NAD come together, and we reform oxaloacetate, and we ended up with another reduced electron carrier. And that is catalyzed by the enzyme malate dehydrogenase. So here we are, we come into a complete full circle now. So here we go, there's that same circle, and as you can see, now at a second glance, it's not actually that bad. You can clearly see what's going on now at each separate each separate step. So now you should all have a big smiley happy face like Squid Girl in the middle. But also, throughout the Krebs cycle, you can actually end up with precursors for different things. So for example, oxaloacetate and alpha ketoglutarate can both spin off to form amino acids. And succinyl CoA can then or succinyl CoA can go off to form porphyrins. But remember this. So from glycolysis, we are provided with two molecules of pyruvate, which means that every single molecule of glucose we break down, this can initiate two Krebs cycles. Okay, so one pyruvate comes each from them, each pyruvate can feed into the Krebs cycle. So taking that into consideration, what is our net yield of carriers? So in one cycle, we obtain one NADH from the link reaction, we obtain another three NADHs from the cycle itself, and also we achieve an FADH from the cycle. So that means for every single molecule of glucose, we obtain eight reduced NADs and two reduced FADs per cycle. Now we come to the end of the presentation, so here in the test yourself bit, I'm going to allocate a certain amount of marks to a question, and you are going to go and try and answer them. I'm not going to give you the answers, I'm just going to allocate the marks so you can estimate how many different points you need to include it. So for the first the question for five marks, outline the link reaction. For one mark, what enzyme is required in order to isomerize citric acid into isocitrate? And then the essay style question for 25 marks, outline the entire citric acid cycle, including the link reaction and include the enzymes required during each of the steps. So as always guys, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed and I hope this, and I did to God, I hope this helps your revision purposes because making these videos helps me revise my exams and I hope it also helps you revise your exams. So again, thanks for watching and good luck revising guys.